Good morning, guys. This morning, I'm on my way to Banff, and I'm actually hoping to photograph a couple of locations that I want to include in my new Banff Photography Location Guide that I'm currently putting together. I've been photographing in the Canadian Rockies for about six or seven years. I've been up mountains, explored shorelines, and been lucky enough to see many a sunrise at some of the most iconic locations in the area. I've been out in all sorts of weather, from minus 30 degree mornings to summer evenings being bitten by mosquitoes. And I've been out to these locations at all times of year and all times of day. I've been to these locations when they're best and when they're not. In some ways, I've suffered so you don't have to. As you know, I've even produced many a video about where to shoot and what to see whilst you're here. I thought it was about time that I put what I've learned over the years into writing. And I've decided to do that into an easily digestible guide you can download and take with you. I hope these guides will help you get once in a lifetime images you may have missed out on otherwise and plan your time in the Canadian Rockies. So on this morning, I set my alarm nice and early, made the drive out to the mountains to visit a couple more locations that I wanted to document. So this little spot here is called Cascade Ponds and it does often get a little overlooked just because just down the road you've got Two Jack Lake and Lake Minnewanka which are probably a bit more famous when it comes to photography. However there are some really nice shots to be had here especially during summer. You can see behind me here we've got these lovely wooden bridges and there are two or three of these kind of dotted around. And then during summer when the pond is open, you're gonna get incredible reflections in the morning of Mount Rundle and those bridges and the trees. And on top of that as well, you might be able to see here some of the trees that have no leaves on them. In fall, these have yellow foliage on them, which can be a bit harder to get hold of around this little area. So any time of year, you can get some great pictures. I'd say in general, winter's probably not the best time for it here, but there are still some shots to be had. And in the photography guide, I've got lots of recommendations of the times of when to shoot locations. And there is a little location around the back here near the cascades that run out of the pond that does work really well in winter or in summer. So this location is definitely worth checking out. But what I am gonna do is hang around a little bit and see if any light comes onto Mount Rundle behind me here and maybe do a bit of a longer exposure if I can. I'm not overly hopeful because the cloud isn't really in my favor this morning, but We'll see what we can get. So, I won't lie to you, don't think I really got the light I was hoping for this morning. It kind of actually felt that every other mountain around me was catching light, apart from Mount Rundle where my camera's pointed. Cascade Mountain just behind me here does get some good glow in the morning here. But I did wait around long enough just to get a bit of light on the bridge just over here and Mount Rundle did get a little bit of side lighting on the ridges on the edges of the mountain there so that's kind of helped give it a little bit of depth I suppose and I'm going to combine that together with a longer exposure of the clouds and then just see if that kind of works out at all but I am super excited to shoot here actually in summer I think this composition with the reflection in the pond here or even some yellow foliage on the trees by the bridge that's gonna look really, really cool. So I will definitely be back. But there is one more location I wanna to shoot today for my guide. And I think that location works kind of pretty well any time of the day. So it should still be quite good now. But let's go check that out. So this image actually ended up being made up of a combination of about 60 different images. I used the majority of those to stack them together and average them out to create a long exposure effect I did this because I didn't have any filters that would fit my 50mm lens with me at the time. 
If you're interested in knowing how to do that technique, make sure to watch my video on it. On top of that, I blended in some of the light that kind of hit the mountain and the bridge for this final result. So let me tell you a little bit more about this guide that I'm putting together. If you've watched my channel, you probably realize that I'm based in the Canadian Rockies. And I've kind of been shooting around this area since about 2017, actually. So I've visited loads of different locations and I've made quite a few videos about where you can shoot and where you can photograph. And hopefully you've seen some of those. But I suppose the idea of this guide is, is to have something that's really easy to take with you. So this is actually a downloadable PDF. So the idea behind this and the idea behind it being a downloadable PDF is that if you're out in the field or if you come to Canada on holiday and don't have a Canadian phone, the chances are you might not have phone signal, you don't have any data or you don't have access to Wi-Fi. And if you don't have those things, it's pretty hard to watch videos and get the recommendations that you might need. So the idea of this is you can download it onto your phone and keep it in your pocket and refer to it throughout the day, no matter where you are and what service you have. So the second location of the day is gonna be kind of around the back of Tunnel Mountain here, up the Tunnel Mountain Trail. If you are coming up here in summer, bear in mind it's about an hour and 15 minute return to the top. And there is a few hundred meters of elevation gain involved as well. If you're coming up here in winter, I would highly recommend bringing some good boots and some cleats or micro spikes. It can get pretty slippery up here. So this is the third little spot like this as you come up the Tunnel Mountain Trail, kind of the third viewpoint with some hand railings. And this is the one where you definitely get the clearest view of Mount Rundle. And what I'm trying to do at the moment is I'm framing up really wide. And I'm using these trees on the side here as a bit of a kind of natural frame on either side. The sun is really high in the sky at the moment. So I think I'm gonna to have to play into that a little bit with the edit and kind of edit the sky kind of blown out. But I'm gonna kind of stay around here for a little while wait for the clouds to kind of cover the sun to get a few shots as well maybe see if i can get some long exposure for some cloud movement but you can see below me here we've got mount rundle really dominant we've got some great foreground framing and we've got the bow river just running through the middle of the scene as well and the golf course just below so winter or summer this really is a fantastic little spot as with most locations in the rockies this would of course be pretty amazing at sunrise and one of the reasons I kind of recommend maybe not coming here for sunrise is because there are so many other amazing locations around Banff and Banff National Park that are perfect for sunrise. So if you're here for a limited amount of time, you probably want to maximize those and go to those kind of more iconic spots and use spots like this to fill your day where you'll still get some great images. And at the end of the day with this, you're still getting a lovely walk up Tunnel Mountain and some incredible views. So even if you get to this viewpoint and the weather's not really playing ball, you're still gonna have a good afternoon and it's a great way to spend your time. So I think that is about it. I think I have all the images that I need now to complete my Banff and Lake Louise photography guide. This has been a bit of a work in progress and it's really work over the last six or seven years of me exploring the parks and taking loads of photographs. And if you've seen some of my images or my videos before and you don't exactly know where some of these locations are, do not worry. This guide is gonna have GPS coordinates for each location so you can navigate to exactly where you need to be to get the composition. There's also gonna be information on how to use those GPS coordinates whilst offline. You can click them from the PDF and it will launch Google Maps. On top of that, you're gonna have information as well like how to get there, where to park, what to shoot, and what time of year and day is best to shoot in that location. There's also gonna be recommendations on what to bring, like what focal length is best at that location. 
So hopefully some of you will find that really useful. And if you do want to download that guide and help support this channel, then check out the link in the description below. And then hopefully you'll be able to maximize your time in Banff and get all of those once in a lifetime images whilst you're here. But once again, thank you so much for watching. Go and download that guide.